ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel for another third-party, unlicensed, one-sixth scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today, we are going to be taking a look at the Flashpoint Nightmare version of The Flash from BVS and Zack Snyder's Justice League. I am pretty darn excited to get this guy out here, because this look for The Flash is super unique. Now I got mine from Comic Sanctorum. I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. Don't forget, this is an unofficial unlicensed product, and this is not a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon, plus the join button for more info on Justin's collection, plus the channel membership. What we are going to do now though, is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art and it's relatively straightforward. Up front an image of the figure himself turning away from us, Doomsday Lightning Man and then the Flashpoint logo. Which is fitting because we are of course reviewing the Flash. On the back of the box, another Flashpoint logo, another image of the figure, and then some Speed Force Lightning. We also have a couple of warnings. Now, I know, it's a bit of an awkward time to be reviewing a figure based off the likeness of Ezra Miller. But we're going to do just that. Review the figure itself and leave all of the real world stuff out of it. First in hand impressions are, this guy is really, really heavy. There is much more die cast here than I was expecting. What we are going to do now though, is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Here we have all the parts and pieces. Now unfortunately, you don't get a ton of stuff because I'm pretty sure all of the budget went into the die cast armor plating. Now starting off with the display base first, it's the modern rectangular style base with a speed force lightning print on the surface and flashpoint up front. Flashpoint, don't do this, simply leave it blank, nobody wants to have this weird name on the front of their display base. Up top, you do have a regular crotch grabber. You do have two completely different faceplates. They're a different shape, but they do attach in the exact same way. You've got some magnets on the sides, and these are both made of plastic. For me, I prefer the red one, but the silver one is painted really nicely. There's also a ton of pitting and scratching actually sculpted into the surface. Even though, as I said, these are plastic, they do look suitably metallic. Something that isn't made of plastic though is this Batarang, which means technically if you wanted to, you could give it to one of your Batman figures because all of the Batarangs by Hot Toys have been plastic. It's nicely painted with some metallic silver and pitting on the surface, and on the other side it's all sorts of dirty and grimy. In fact, it kind of looks as though it's scorched as the Flash has been running through the Speed Force. Lastly, you do get some open palm running hands. Now unfortunately, you don't get any closed fists, nor do you get an open palm relaxed hand for the right side. Going forward, I would love to see pairs. I don't know why companies are being so stingy with their hand selections. Now the open palm ones do look really good, you've got armor plating on one side and the other is simply the red glove. There's some texture on the surface and a decent amount of shading so they look suitably weathered. What we are going to do now though is get the Flash himself out here and take a closer look. Here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And damn, these third-party companies are getting very, very good. This might just be one of my new favorite third-party releases. Starting off with the body, it's a little bit lankier, but the proportions are still on point. It does look like a dude in a suit. Speaking of the suit, that armor is something else. It's metal, but it's also painted beautifully. Now I don't know if they've just painted it in red and scuffed off some of that paint on the surface to reveal the bare metal underneath, 
whatever they've done, it's working for me. I honestly could believe you if you told me this was made by a first party company. What we are going to do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. Here we have him up close and personal. Now I can't overstate how hefty this figure is. That's because all of these armor plates are made of real metal. Completely unnecessary, but it makes for one, a very premium feeling figure, and number two, it does take a little bit of a toll on articulation. More on that a little bit later. Starting off with the head sculpt, yeah, that says Ramilla, even though he has a moustache, the cowl, and the helmet on, I can still tell who that's supposed to be. Now you can bring down the faceplate if you want to hide it entirely, and you do have two different options. That nice deep metallic red, or this brighter silver. The silver matches with the rest of the helmet, which also is quite nicely painted. There's dirt and grime in the crevices, some silver dry brushing up on top, it looks suitably metallic. The head sculpt is magnetic, which means you are going to get a maximum range of motion. Now the undersuit is all this rubbery style fabric with some screen printing on the surface. You also have some dirt and grime and some silver dry brushing on the rubber itself, which ties the entire look together. Speaking of the entire look, it's quite asymmetrical, which wasn't something I noticed in the movie. We didn't spend a ton of time with this version of the Flash. You do have some pleather straps up top, which are real pleather. Fingers crossed they stand the test of time. You do have a different shoulder pad on either side, made of metal, and the Flash logo front and center. These armor plates look absolutely stunning. There's a darker red base coat, then some dry brushing of silver on the surface, plus some soot that all nicely blends the entire thing together and makes it look suitably realistic. You also have an armor plate on the bicep on the right side, but you don't have one on the left, which leaves you with a ton more of this rubbery style fabric. You also, once again, I know I've already said this, but you have an asymmetrical design for the gauntlets. One side has some pleather strapping and the other simply doesn't. Coming down to the legs, different on one side versus the other, but you do still have pleather straps on both sides. Now the knee pads are separate attachments, but these aren't die cast. They are a rubbery style plastic, which is good because if they were metal and they were rubbing up against these two metal pieces top and bottom, then some of that paint might have worn away. It's better that they keep these a little bit softer so they can flex around these armor plates. Coming down to the shins, once again, two different looks for either side and all metal. Around the back, you do have these pleathery straps that keep them on, but I'm pretty sure they are permanently attached to the suit, and these straps are just for show. Lastly, for the boots, they are big and chunky, plus the underside is nicely painted and sculpted, and you do have some tread detail down below. Even though this isn't your typical design for the Flash, because you do get to see it in Zack Snyder's Justice League, yeah, I'm really excited to add this to the shelf with the rest of the team. If you were wondering what this particular outfit looks like with the Hot Toys Flash head sculpt on, I wouldn't hold your breath. Unfortunately, even though it is magnetic and compatible, the neck is slightly shorter, so as you can see, it looks very, very goofy. If you do have the third party Ezra Miller head sculpt, it would look good if it sat this high, but once again, it doesn't. So Flash, if he doesn't have his own stock head sculpt on, does look a little bit goofy. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the Hot Toys Nightmare Batman, the original from BVS wearing his custom Daft Toys coat on the right, and the Flashpoint Flash on the left. And these two look awesome standing together. I'm hoping we get Mira, I'm hoping we get Nightmare Cyborg and Nightmare Deathstroke, so finally we can build out the full team. But for now, this is a very good start. As you can see, Barry is shorter than Batman, 
but only ever so slightly, so he's still a rather imposing presence in the display. Next up, here we have the third party Nightmare Joker, and these two look awesome standing together. Nightmare Joker, Nightmare Flash, and Batman all together in the display? Yeah, I cannot wait to see it. But as you can see, Flash is a little bit taller than Joker, and that to me makes perfect sense. Flash is wearing this big bulky outfit including these very chunky boots, therefore, yeah, he would be a little bit taller. Just going over articulation. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I am willing to go. Now starting off with the head sculpt, it is on a magnet at the base of the head, meaning you do get a fairly decent range going forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up on very clicky ratchets, they will go forward and back on softer ratchets, and you do get a butterfly joint up here at the shoulder. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow that gets you past 90, and then a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. The torso will crunch forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there, but seeing as though the armor plates are so heavy, they literally spring right back down. They will go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, ratcheted double bend at the knee that does get you to 90, and then of course a double ball peg down here for the ankle. Just wrapping up on Flashpoint Nightmare Flash from BBS and Zack Snyder's Justice League. Going into this, I was really excited. Number one, it's always a good day when you get another member of the Nightmare team, but number two, he was touted as having real die-cast metal armor plating. And I thought, oh, okay, it's gonna be a bit of a gimmick, it's not going to be that hefty, surely. No, I was wrong, this guy weighs a ton. He feels really high quality, the paint applications on the armor are absolutely stunning, this company has outdone themselves. Now in saying all of that, I do like the choice of body, but I think all of the joints should have been ratchets. The hip joints just can't take the stress of being pulled up with that die-cast armor plating, they get pulled down immediately. So when you try and get him into a running pose, it can be a little bit more difficult, but don't fret, it is still achievable. And he does still pose really well considering those armor plates, as we've discussed a bunch of times already, are very, very heavy. Now he doesn't come with a ton of accessories, nor does he come with anywhere near enough hands. Fist hands and two relaxed palms are a must. Flashpoint, in the future, make sure you're including a full array. We don't want to have just one hand for either side, you need to include pairs. I also would have loved to have seen a proper unmasked head sculpt with the helmet fully detached like we see in the movie, but this also works because you can move the faceplate up, you just can't open up any of the other panels. At the end of the day, yeah, I really love this figure. It's so good in fact that I might just say this is Flashpoint's best release to date. Now I got mine from Comic Sanctorum. Do bear in mind this is a third party, unlicensed, unofficial product. I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is by no means a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. While you are down there, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon, plus the join button for more info on Justin's Collection Plus, if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.